Raise your hand if you listen to music every day. Almost everyone. Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, raise your hand if you think you probably hear music every day. Yeah, music surrounds us. Whether we realize it or not, we encounter it on a daily basis. Even if we're not intentionally seeking it out, we might hear it in a store, or walking by somebody else listening to music, or at an intermission of a TEDx. And music can have a powerful effect on the brain and our senses. It can manipulate our emotions, fueling energy or promoting relaxation. It can ignite old memories from as far back as our childhood, and it can inspire creativity. I asked my third grade students this year how they think music makes the world a better place, and one of my third graders said, well, I think it can help people to get in love. <laughs> and one of my favorite things that music can do is evoke these motor responses that make us want to move our bodies in weird ways. Since the inception of our species, our vocal cords in our bodies have given us the ability to create, hear, and perceive sound. And this has provided us with one of the most important aspects of our evolutionary dominance, communication. We have the ability to hear more sounds than the average mammal, and more importantly, we have the ability to form complex social relationships with one another through the sounds we make with our voices. But that's not all we can do with our voices. We can manipulate and harness these sounds, these pitches, to create what we call music. Music, like speech, can serve as a source of identity. The music that we know and we love, or the music that we don't know and we don't love, can affect the way we dress, the way we behave, the people who we choose to interact with. It can be a big part of who we are. Globally, it's apparent that music can even define characteristics of certain cultures. And historically, it can define an entire era. When looking at the transformation of music over time, we can see that it's changed at an exponential rate, just like technology, and for many of the same reasons. New forms of thought, faster modes of communication, new technologies. And everything that's happened from the past has led us to where we are now. And the only reason that this chunk here is bigger than its predecessors is because I couldn't make it into small enough chunks to accurately represent the different trends and meldings of ideas and cultures and styles and genres that we've experienced. I had a student say to me recently, wow, I wonder what they're going to look back and call our era of music. And it's hard to say, considering just 100 years ago, we were dancing to ragtime music and singing songs like, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. It's hard to say. And really, 100 years, that's one person's lifespan ago. And when you look at the full scope of this, maybe 10 people's lifespans ago, we've gone from highly sacred Gregorian chant, monophonic music, to commercially influenced pop phenomena like the Spice Girls. We've seen a huge transformation. So what caused this transformation? People, whether you're a listener or a composer, people like me, people like you, people who have laughed, who have cried, who have celebrated, who have surrendered in defeat, people who simply respond to the world around them, and most importantly, people who have had the power of choice. who have stood in that fork in the road and pondered which way to turn. And it's those people who took the path less traveled to try something innovative and daring that might not be accepted by the masses at first, 
Those are the people who'd ushered in the dawn of new eras. So what does it take to create music? It can be as simple as humming an improvised melody, and it can be as complex as writing an entire 45-minute symphony for an entire orchestra. But it all boils down to the same basic elements. So let's think melody, the thing we grasp onto the most in music. In Western music, we have 12 pitch classes. pitches. And with these 12 pitches, every melody you know, countless uniquely identifiable pieces of music have been created. So all of this gave me an idea for a little experiment. And for my experiment, I used melody as the constant. And here's my melody. And I gave this melody to nine of my high school IB music students, four of which are here today. And I asked them to create something from it. No rules, no limitations. And that was basically my only direction. And I knew before I got the results that I would get very different interpretations. First of all, because there are a lot of directions I could have gone. They could have added words, changed the key, made it fast, made it slow, chosen different instruments. But aside from all of these musical choices, there are other factors involved. In the little bit of time that I knew my IB students, I knew that they were different people with different upbringings, different experiences, different hopes, different dreams. And all of those things affect the way we express ourselves. So I knew that when I got their assignment back, that I'd be not seeing them wholly as a person, but seeing a little bit deep into their soul, a little bit more about who they are. So I'm gonna share with you a little clip of each student's um, piece. And I think you're gonna see a little bit of them in the music. And I'll raise my hand to show you when it's gone to the next person. Um, and if any of my students would like to raise their hand when their piece comes on, please do. Thank you. We're 
all snowflakes, cognitively and physically unique from one another. And so is the creativity, the music within us. And so next time you listen to music, maybe you don't just hear the music, but hear the people. Thank you. Thank you.